Hi, I'm Byron McClinic with WoodTurningReviews.com, where I review wood turning books, videos, magazines, tools, and anything else I can find that's related to wood turning. This review is of a book entitled The Pin Turner's Workbook, Second Edition, by Barry Gross. The publisher is Fox Chapel Publishing. It's a soft cover book with 125 pages, and it has a retail cost of $14.95. I did get mine on sale for $12.95, so uh, you may want to look around. The contents of this book is laid out in parts, and the parts are broken up into chapters and projects. It starts with a one-page introduction, then goes into seven parts of chapters and projects. Part one is a gallery of pins by various pin makers. Part two is pin turning basics. Part three, turning wooden pins. Part four, turning pins from other materials, part 5 turning advanced pins, part 6 is FAQs and troubleshooting, part 7 marketing, and then a section of resources. The intro is a short one page overview of what is in this book. I think the best part of the intro is one of the last sentences. Life is too short to own an ugly pin. Part 1 Gallery of Pins the gallery is eight pages of beautiful, great-looking pins by Barry Gross and other pin turners, or I will go as far as to say pin turning artists, or as Mr. Gross calls them, master pin turners. I also think the gallery is full of ideas to give inspiration to the pin turner that is looking for a step beyond the norm of pin turning. Part 2, Pin Turning Basics, is made up of six chapters. Chapter 1 is Setting Up Shop. Setting up shop covers, choosing a lathe, tips for choosing a mini lathe, auxiliary workshop machinery, selecting pin turning tools, mandrels, and finally safety in the workshop. Chapter 2 is selecting materials, covering wood, the tallest trees, the oldest trees, and the number of species, and anatomy of, of a tree. Learning to think small covers many choices of wood and grain patterns, pin blank size, burls, cutting on angles, exotic hardwood, stabilized wood, and alternative materials, pin blanks made from grape nuts, shredded wheat, and even real snakeskin, and more. Chapter 3, Pin Plating and Styles, is a discussion of shapes and styles of pins. There is also a chart listing 31 of the more popular styles of pins, and the platings that are offered by each pin. Plating covers the variety of pin kit platings offered by current pin kit manufacturers and the pros and cons of each plating type. This section covers 10 plating types and has pictures of the pins made with the plating covered or the plating type covered. Chapter 4 Pin Blank Preparation this chapter covers gather your materials, matching the pin blank, drilling the pin blank, which covers holding the pin blank, marking the pin blank and drill bit types, gluing the pin tubes into the pin blank, the preparation of the tubes and the types of glue to use. Chapter 5, Pin Turning Tool Techniques, starts with an explanation of the ABCs of tool control, then goes on to the speed of the lathe, position of the tool rest, tool holding techniques and finishes with tools of the trade, which covers the proper use of a roughing gouge or a spindle roughing gouge, a skew chisel, the spindle gouge, the spindle master, which is a cross between a skew and a spindle gouge, the parting tool, and sandpaper. Chapter 6, Dyeing and Staining. This is a very short two-page chapter which talks about aniline dyes and alcohol-based stains. It also has a step-by-step -step process for pin blank dyeing. Part 3 is turning wooden pins. This part has seven projects, which starts with a basic slimline pin with step-by-step -step instructions. Project 2, a wire burn band slimline pin. Project 3, a corian banded slimline pin. Project 4, a box elder comfort pin. Project 5, a bird's eye maple rollerball pin. Project 6, a maple burl click pin.
Project 7, a lacewood cigar pin, and a list of instructions on how to complete each project. Part 4 is turning pins from other materials. Part 4 has six projects, starting with Project 1, a cigar corion pin. This has instructions on how to work with corion, how to prepare the corion blank, drilling the corion blank, um, turning the corion pin blank, sanding and finishing your corion pin blank, and assembling your pin. Project 2 is a comfort inlace pin. Project 3 is a European style polygram pin. Project 4 is a rollerball wood and corion pin. Project 5, a Gel Rider Classic Click Deer Antler Pin. Project 6 is a Color Grain Classic Elite Rollerball Pin. All the projects come with a complete materials list and instructions on how to complete each project. Part 5, Turning Advanced Pins. This part has four projects. Project 1, a segmented pin. Project 2, a closed end pin. Project 3, a single cross pin, and Project 4, a lace pin kit. Once again, each project has a materials list. It also has a more detailed section on how to prepare the pin blank and how to turn and finish each project. Part 6, FAQs and troubleshooting. This section is a list of 22 questions. Most of them are troubleshooting questions with pictures and some very good answers. Part 7 is marketing. If you're selling or thinking of selling your pins, Part 7 has a nice overview of how to go about it. However, as Mr. Gross states in the introduction of this part, there are entire books devoted to the subject of selling and marketing your wooden products, so this book will not give you the silver bullet to success. What it does cover is very good information. It covers wholesale versus retail, production work, finding the correct location, listen to your customers, getting established, local festivals, craft shows, and specific fountain pen shows, displaying your work, specializing in a particular material and market, customizing your fine writing instruments, and pricing your work. The last page of this book is resources. It gives you the name, address, and website of lathe and tool manufacturers, pin kit and pin blank suppliers, and some pin gallery artists. My final thoughts are, this is a very fine book for the pin turner who is stuck in a rut and would like to learn some new and exciting alternatives to making pins. With this book, Mr. Gross gave me some great insight on new ways to do the same old thing. I made three types of pins from this book and had a lot of fun. First I made was the wire burned band. There's two of them there. You can see the wire burns in this one better than in the darker burl, although I can see them fine not on camera. Secondly, I made a couple of the uh, Corian banded slimline pins where I substituted wood for the Corian. And uh, this I had left over off of another pin blank and uh, I think this band is a leftover pin blank from this pin blank. Thirdly, I made the segmented pin. The segmented pin was a lot of fun. It took uh, a while to get it all cut and put together. It took me three to get it right. Uh, the first two were, were a little bit tougher. I messed up on the uh, pattern on this one. Uh, this one didn't go together as tightly as it should have. This one came out pretty nice, I think. So all in all, I had, highly recommend this book for anyone looking for some new ways to make pens. I'm Byron McClinic with WoodTurningReviews.com. I hope you enjoyed this review on The Pen Turner's Workbook, 2nd Edition by Barry Gross. And uh, if you're not at the website, www woodturningreviews.com please come to visit our site and check out the other reviews thank you much for watching bye, -bye.